Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineer Geek, and today we're going to be talking about how to install and set up Ruby. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to install Groovy. Uh, one thing you might notice different about this episode is more recently, I have upgraded my operating system and some of the videos I pre-recorded, I was on Linux Mint, I'm now on Ubuntu. Uh, it's still set up, you know, very similarly, but uh, one thing you might notice is I have Groovy Duke, which is a little creation of mine uh, in the background, but other than that, uh, everything's set up very similar. So let's get started and show you how to install Groovy. Now the first thing that you're going to need to do is uh, oops, how did I, is install Java because Groovy is a JVM based language so you have to install Java. Uh, depending on your operating system the setup might be a little different. Uh, so like if you're on Windows you download an executable uh, if you're on uh, Linux, uh, you could probably install the, you could install the the Open JDK, uh, which I actually think comes installed by default, uh, which is an alternate. But I'm not sure about the stability of the Open JDK versus the Oracle JVK, JDK. Um, I've traditionally went with the Sun. JDK, which Oracle take, took over just because of uh, stability, but uh, the Open JDK may have caught up by now. I just haven't tried it recently. So what I would do if you're on uh, a Debian-based Linux is I would add a PPA, uh, which this will give you the uh, Oracle D uh, PPA and, well, actually it's not Oracle, but the Web 18 PPA, and then you can install using this command so that uh, you would just have that in app get and it you know with your updates would you know happen automatically under Ubuntu uh, might be slightly different depending on your distribution how that actually works so then the next thing I would do is you have to add Java to your path uh, which I usually do in my dot bash RC if you're under Mac I think you'd add it under the uh, bash underscore profile uh, not a Mac person at this point so I'm, I, I'm not sure exactly that setup you you might want to look that up but I, I think it's relatively similar because it's still uh, under underneath Mac is uh, bash and Unix so what I here have here is my uh, Java home which I set to where Java is installed I add it to the path and I export the path and as you see here I already have Groovy on my path and or I set up Groovy home and I add that to the path Rails home very similar uh, this this is how I do I do it uh, because I usually usually switch versions of Groovy and Rails you know rather frequently I'll show you an alternative way to do this which is actually better a little later on but this is how I've done it in the past. And I could collapse a lot of this down to one line and just delimit the path with colons. Uh, if you're on Windows, however, the path is a little bit more tricky to set. You have to find the environments variable, which changes uh, its location with every version of Windows. And I think in Windows 8, they, I don't know where they buried it. But usually you go, you'd right click on my computer, go to, uh, I think it's system properties and, you know, click through that to find the environments variable tab uh, or, you know, button to bring this dialog up. And then you would edit the path, which under Windows is delimited by semicolon rather than colon. And you could create uh, new variables here for uh, like your Java home, your Groovy home and your Grails home. Now, before setting up the actual uh, Groovy and Grails homes, you should actually download Groovy. So uh, you go over to groovy.codehagus. I'm not sure how to say that, and I, I get in trouble with my pronunciations. But you go here, here, go to the download page, and download whatever version you want. Usually, I would go with the latest. 
and you would extract that uh, to somewhere. Uh, if you're on Windows, you could extract it on C drive. Uh, in uh, under Linux, I usually have a uh, place call, uh, that I call progs under my home directory, and you can see I have Groovy, and I also have Grails here. And if you go back, Grails, you go to grails.org, and you could download it the same way, which is right here. Uh, there's also a download page for like installing, you know, earlier versions and stuff like that. If you have to be on a specific version, so to check all that we can do to see what's you know and make sure things is, are installed which you should do you know as you do it you could do java dash version which shows you what java version i'm on and you could do groovy tac tac version and see that i am on groovy version uh 2.1.6 and it shows me the jvm there as well i can also do grails dash dash version Whoops. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Might help if I spell version correctly. <laughs> so, and it shows you the Grails version. So, that's how you get, you know, the basic setup. Now, as I said, there is a better way, especially if you're under a Unix or Linux uh, environment, there's something called GVM. So before I start uh, installing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my Grails and Groovy Home and just keep Java there. And I'm also going to go over to where I have this installed and delete these for now. Because what we're going to do is call, uh, use GVM, which is a command line tool for managing different versions of Groovy, Grails, and uh, Griffin, Gradle, and Vertex, which are all uh, somewhat Groovy-based uh, frameworks, environments, and tools. So basically this runs very well under Linux, Mac. Uh, you can get it running under Segwin apparently. I'm not sure how it works with class paths and stuff like that, but I, I do know under Linux it works very well. So, you know, if you're under Windows, your mileage may vary, but supposedly you can do that. So installation, we take this, we go over to our command line, we'll paste that in run that and now we have the GVM up and installed now it will not run you know if I do GVM right now you know obviously it can't find it because I have to create a new window so what I'm going to do is exit and for some reason under Linux or the latest version it does this but if I relaunch it now knows it that you know resets it so now if I do GVM and oops help I can get like the help dialog which shows you the basic uh, how to use uh, GVM so the way GVM works is you can install using you know the installer I command candidate would be groovy grails vertex gradle or whatever and the version number you could also do list uh, you can set up uh, which version you're using which is, is like a per session use or you can set up the default which will set basically make uh, whatever version of like say groovy or grails be what you're currently using and what you're always uh, using so it allows you to use different versions of Groovy Grails very uh, seamlessly, move back and forth, and it manages the path variables for you. So what I'm going to do is go GVM install Groovy 2.1.6, which is what I had installed before. And it's going to download all that takes a little while so now I have it and it asks me if I want to make it my default I'll say yes so now if I do groovy dash dash tac tac version, version 
it'll show you that I have that installed and it's running on the command line. It has the path variables all set up for me. So that's very nice. And it's just a nice and easier way to deal with that. Now, if I go to my home directory, just to show you, you know, how all this is working, uh, there is a .gvm folder. And this is where it manages all the uh, installs. So if I go under Groovy, you'll see the 2.1.6 version. If I go under the current, obviously, it circles back around. It, that's how it manages it. So... And now if I go back to my dash RC, you'll see that there is this little line for the GVM, which uh, sets it up so th that it can manage uh, the path variables and setting the defaults and all that for you. So, you know, you will need to leave this in your, you know, bash RC in order for it to work. I think under Mac, it'd be under, the, it probably adds it under the profile. So that's how you get the... Uh, Grails up and installed, or I should say Groovy up and installed, and Grails. Uh, now, one other thing I'm going to show you before we leave is, uh, so now that we have Groovy installed, one thing that you get with Groovy is the Groovy console. If we run that, we get this which will probably look uh, slightly different in uh, your uh, environment. But I can start writing Groovy right away. Uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and I can... Just to show you, there's run, which is control R. And, oh, it might help if I close that. Uh, so run that. And obviously, you can see you can run Groovy. And you, if you're on a, let's see, uh, control. <laughs> I know there's a way to use, oh, control shift L. Basically make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. And obviously you can see I did a print line and when I did it correctly, it printed out hello world. So this is a, a nice little tool for just uh, playing around with Groovy. Uh, in a later video, I'll, I'll actually show you how to set up a uh, IDE uh, like Eclipse or IntelliJ so that you can start using it uh, with you know more advanced tools. But this is a, a nice little tool just to get used to Groovy and play around and experiment with Groovy. And that's pretty much all I had for now. So I guess I will talk to you next time.